here I've presented the given information on the left. We have been told that the primary number of windings is 110 turns. The secondary number of windings or coils is 880. So right away we see that this is a step up transformer since the number of windings is increasing. The primary voltage is stated to be 6.70 volts as measured by the voltmeter. And the secondary voltage when measured experimentally steps up to 39.6 volts. I've written this one in green simply because that's an experimental value and we're going to try and figure out what it should be ideally if there was no losses. So this one we're going to end up calculating and at the end comparing. Our primary current is 4.1 amps and our secondary current once again that's where the losses occur on the secondary side drops down to 0.35 amps as we'd expect. If the voltage goes up the current has to go down to compensate. So again, we're going to calculate the ideal secondary current as if there was no losses eventually. So question one, what is the secondary voltage ideally? If there is no losses in this transformer, what should the secondary voltage be? Well, we know our equation. Our equation for ideal transformers is just that the ratio of the turns NP over NS is the same as the ratio of the voltages. So if I simply plug in my numbers NP being 110, NS being 880, and my primary voltage being 6.7, let's solve for what the secondary voltage should be. Now the left hand side of my equation simply becomes 1 8th representing a factor of 8. The coils, the number of turns of the coils has increased 8 times and our right hand side becomes 6.7 volts over Vs and if I solve it for Vs with a little bit of cross multiplying I end up getting my secondary voltage is 6.70 volts times 8. It's 8 times bigger. So when I work this out I end up getting a secondary voltage of 53.6 volts. That's what we would expect if the transformer was ideal. However we see experimentally that it's actually only 39.6 volts. There has been some losses due to heat and perhaps the magnetic fields weren't 100% concentrated into the secondary windings. So 53.6 would be ideal, no losses. Let's look at the second question. The second question is very similar, except now we're calculating for the secondary current. So we can use our other transformer equation, which simply says that the ratio of the voltages is the inverse of the ratio of the currents. So it looks like this. You'll notice in the equation that it's VP over VS and IS over IP. The currents have flipped spots. Instead of IP over IS to match the left hand side, they're reversed to represent that inverse relationship between voltage and current. So our numbers are as follows. 6.7 volts was our primary voltage. Our ideal secondary voltage was 53.6. Again, if you work that out, that's a ratio of 1 to 8. I could have used the number of turns there and got the same answer. And on the right-hand side, we have IS, which is what we're looking for, divided by 4.1 amps. So when we work this through, we end up getting the following. So our secondary current has dropped down from 0.41 amps to 0.5125 amps. And experimentally, we found it's even lower because of the losses at 0.35 amps. So, so far, everything is in agreement. Now let's zoom out so we have some room to answer the last couple of questions. So our last question looks at power. What is the power in compared to the power out? And then we're going to look at efficiency. Now for this question, we're going to look at the actual power. The instructor wanted to know what the overall efficiency of the transformer is. If it was an ideal transformer and we used these values that we calculated, of course the efficiency would be 100%. But it's not in fact an ideal transformer. 
we have to determine what the power in and the power out is. Turns out that's very simple. Our equation for power is just V times I, and we'll just do it twice. So on this primary side, our primary power will just be our primary voltage times our primary current, both of which were given in the video. Our primary voltage was 6.7 and our primary current was 4.1 amps. And when we multiply these together, we get the following. 27.5 watts. Let's repeat with the secondary side quickly. Again, for this analysis, we're going to use our secondary voltage as 39.6, the experimental voltage, not the one we calculated, and our secondary current as 0.35 amps. So we end up getting V times I is 13.9 watts. Clearly we've lost some power. If it was ideal, the primary and the secondary would both be 27.5 watts. But obviously the transformer itself is heating up and like I said before, perhaps some of the magnetic field is not being fully captured on the secondary side. So now let's look at efficiency, our last question. Efficiency is simply output divided by input. Our output is 13.9 and our input is 27.5. So when you work this through and multiply it by 100, you'll get the following. So we see that our transformer is far from ideal. It is in fact only 51% efficient. So 49% of that initial energy was wasted as heat.